Let's get back to basics. This is going to be a beginner's walkthrough for processing in PixInsight. Welcome to SETI Astro. Most of my tutorials are aimed at intermediate or experienced PixInsight users, but let's go ahead and get something out there for people just starting. All right, what this tutorial is. We're gonna go over simple steps. We're gonna keep it high level. And at the end, we just wanna make an astral picture. What it's not, it's not going to be an in-depth tutorial covering technical details or hours of tweaking and multiple dozens of processes. So we'll cover the basic steps just from start to making your astro image. We're going to have to first just see what's in the image. We need to be able to crop and remove a gradient, uh, deal with noise and blurriness, stretch our starless and stars, and then put it all back together. I'll have links to my processing icons, my repository link, Jurgen's toolbox repository link, and a link to test data so you can follow along. Okay, step one was just seeing what you got. So when you're done making your master file and you, you open it up in PixInsight, uh, quick tip, if you just double click the background, it'll open up a open image file dialog. So you don't need to go to like file open or whatever. You just, just double click and it'll open it up for you. But you'll, you'll probably see a black screen. You're gonna want to run the screen transfer function or STF uh, in order to be able to see it. It's gonna stretch it from the linear to a nonlinear state. Uh, keyboard shortcut is control A to do it. It simplifies things or you could hit this little nuclear button. Uh, and if it looks all green and weird or blue and weird, that's because you got a linked stretch on. Just click the little unlinked button and now it's gonna stretch each channel separately. You can go ahead and, and restretch. Now you can see what's in your image in the first place. So that's really step one. Just what do you got? Next step is to crop and remove the gradient. So in this particular example, the object of interest is kind of small in the middle. Maybe you want the bigger field of view. It's up to you, but either way, process all process, dynamic crop, and now just click and drag uh, to, to the area you want and then click the green check. You might get a warning saying that it'll lose its astrometric solution, which is just the plate solve. Uh, just click yes and it'll go away. All right, so now you cropped it. And then we have to remove the gradient. I have my own gradient removal script under script, city astro, automatic DBE. I'm just gonna leave everything at the default uh, again, beginner's tutorial, you may want to just replace the target image. So let's just replace it. Click Execute. Okay, when it's done, we have our background here. You could open STF back up and click the little nuclear button or just Control A and it will run the screen transfer function for you and it just shows you the gradient. And then again, uh, we'll just Control A on our image and now we have the gradient removed. To go along with that, just to keep things simple, if you uh, need to neutralize your background and um, do a, a quick color calibration, I do have the process icons to the right over here for background neutralization and color calibration, or you can find them under process, all process. Uh, just Again, we don't need to be fancy here. Just run them. Okay, when that's done, you're going to Want to move on to the next one, dealing with noise, deconvolution, or the, the de-blurring of your image, and removing the stars. Now, there are some paid 
pieces of software out there which do an amazing job by RC Astro. They're Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, and Star Exterminator. If you haven't purchased those, there's other tools as well for uh, removing the blur. There's a tool by Deep Sky Detail called Astro Sharp. And I'll have a link for that in the description too. For denoising, there's a great tool called Deep SNR that works on colored images. I'll have a link for that in the description. And then for removing the stars, there's StarNet, which is automatically part of Pix Insight. But uh, StarNet 2 is the improved version. I'll put that in the description as well. So those are the free tools. I also have the, uh, the paid for tools. So I'm just going to run with the uh, RC Astro tools. We can have a whole nother video with the, with the other tools too. Again, you'll have, um, if you download my process icons, I'm just going to drag and drop Blur Exterminator Fluffy. It's just uh, some tweaks to the, the Blur Exterminator settings, nothing major. For denoising, yeah, I'm just going to use the, the noise exterminator on the defaults. Again, let's just let's just get to the point where you have a nice picture at the end. And depending on if you've actually set up GPU acceleration or if you're just using the CPU to do that work, those two items may take a bit of time. And then same with uh, removing the stars. I'm gonna use star exterminator but like I said, StarNet 2 is free to use. You could use that too. And if you have, again, my icons, I'm just gonna drag and drop Star Exterminator over to it. When it's done running, you're gonna get an image of just the stars. We're gonna go ahead and click the minimize button uh, just so we could have that off to the side here. And now we have our image with no stars and uh, no noise. If you run screen transfer function again now, the stretch will look ridiculous. So let's just do that so you can see. If you hit the nuclear button now, it just overstretches it. Don't panic. It's just the screen transfer function uh, really stretching it because there's so little noise. Uh, I, cover, I cover that in other videos, but just don't panic if you run screen transfer function again on your noise free image and it just overstretches it. Not a big deal. Now let's go up to script, city astro, statistical stretch. This is my stretching script. Let's go ahead and make the dialog bigger. If you make it bigger, just click preview refresh again and it will resize that preview to the, the new bigger area. I'm also gonna unclick normalize the image range and just uh, refresh the preview again. All right, and the 0.25 is too much since this image has a distinct object in it and most of the background is sky and not signal. Let's go ahead and, and lower this. Let's try, let's try like a, a, a 0.12 or 1.3, kind of by that 0.1 that the instructions say. Let's go ahead and give it a curves boost uh, we'll try 0.25 for right now and just preview refresh again. All right, now the background's nice and dark. Our object is still fairly, fairly dim. So let's, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and give her a, a big boost here to like 0.45. There, that's looking better. Just then just click execute. All right, when it's done, you'll, you'll see off to the console, it'll say something like disabling STF, um, that the final curves was supplied successfully. That just means it's all done. You can go ahead and exit the, exit the dialog. And now we have a, a stretched image here. And now if you want to, and I did say you could open up curves, curves transformation, the little circle down here has a real time preview. And this works just like curves in uh, Photoshop or anything, right? If you drag up and down, it makes the image brighter or dimmer. You could right click to remove a point. 
Uh, if you click on the preview somewhere over here, it highlights where in the image along the histogram you're looking at. So we're kind of right, right there by that uh, 0.125. So let's let's anchor down there. Let's we'll put a point there. Maybe we want to darken the sky a little bit there, and maybe we want to brighten up just just a little bit in here. And another option you could do is this C is a uh, chrominance. It's like saturation. We're just going to go ahead and, and just be careful when you're using these other sliders. They're, they're really strong. We'll just give it a little nudge up. Uh, then the blue square, uh, we'll apply those to the image. And we'll exit out of that. And now at this point, again, let's, let's just get it finished where we need to go let's double click on our stars now these are linear if we undo the screen transfer function we'll have a black screen now if you try to run screen transfer function on a stars only image ridiculous stuff will happen so let's just look at it boom ridiculous uh never do that never run screen transfer function on a stars only image uh that's not how you stretch your stars. So just again, go to script, SETI Astro, star stretch. We'll just leave it at defaults. Uh, we'll click remove green and execute. There, it's done. Stars are beautiful. You can even zoom in. There's some nice color on them. There's some blues and reds. Now it's just a matter of combining our two images back together. Let's go up to script toolbox so this is Jurgen's toolbox it has a lot of great stuff in it but there's a, a an easy one here combine images so let's click on that and it's going to open up a script here image one it's going to open on the active window you have there image two we want the other one and the combined method of screen that's going to be perfect to put your stars back into your starless image And then uh, be sure to click the green check. And now you have your stars back in with your starless image there. And at this point, it's just a, a matter of any final tweaks you may want to do. I'm just going to open curves again and uh, be sure to click the real time preview. I think a thing uh, beginners do a lot is they want to make the the background like super dark you don't need to do that it it looks weird when you have a completely black black background if you see here like my background values are in the upper point zero five six seven eight that's fine point one point one two all that is good and there now now we got a nice little image of the helix in this case but that that was the point of the video here it's just a beginner's walk let's let's start with your linear data and, and just make a an image because i think that's the the goal for a beginner they just want to have an image when they're done that you know that they can show their family uh so i hope you guys like the beginner's walk here Obviously, there's a lot more, a lot more we can go into on each one of these steps and multiple things to do. But let's just do this, the simple walk first and uh, get an image out of Pixit. When you're done with your image, be sure to go to File, Save As, and this is how you're going to actually save it out. There's a drop down here. You could select JPEG, PNG, TIFF, whatever image file you want. You could rename it. You could save you know select where you're saving it uh, because right now it's just stuck in pixel inside be sure to save your work well, i hope you guys liked the video please comment like and subscribe